Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. Marek Magierowski, the Polish ambassador to Israel, has been attacked in front of the Polish embassy in Tel Aviv. According to Israeli media, Magierowski was spat on and pelted with insults by a man identified as Arik Gledeman, a known Israeli architect. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki spoke out strongly against the attack. The Israeli ambassador to Poland, Anja Azari, was called to the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The racist attack against the Polish ambassador to Israel is unacceptable. We will not allow for any acts of xenophobia, be it against our diplomats or any other Polish citizen. I was upset to hear about yesterday's incident in Israel, during which the Polish ambassador, Marek Magierowski, was attacked. I strongly oppose and condemn these acts of violence. Israel expresses its full sympathy with the Polish ambassador and shock at the attack. Israeli police currently investigating. We'll update our Polish friends. This is a top priority to us, as we are fully committed to diplomat safety and security. The Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs has requested an explanation. The Polish government demands the perpetrator to be brought to justice. Ambassador Azari was called to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to clarify the situation. The agenda of today's lower house Polish parliament session was stripped of the first reading of a bill draft prepared by Cookies 15 Club. The bill is designed to protect Poland for right to ownership claims by Jewish organisations of airless property left by victims of the Holocaust. The writers of the law, the Cookies 15 politicians, say that the withdrawal of the project is a sign of subservience to Israel and Jewish communities. The Cookies 15 movement bill, known as Anti-447, was supposed to get to the first reading, but the senior ranking members committee decided in the morning to remove it from the agenda. There have been various explanations given. They just want to rock the boat. There is no basis for any payments for reparations. Poland is not a perpetrator. We are the victim. We will not pay anyway. We do not have anything to pay for. The removal of the Anti-447 Act from the agenda was also criticised by the Confederation Party, which hopes to collect signatures under a similar grassroots bill. The Law and Justice Party is behaving very strangely in this matter. A strange day. The bill was supposed to be on the agenda. It is not here. We have the incident with the Polish ambassador being beaten up in Israel. Mrs. Mosbacher says yesterday on TV and television that nothing is going on. In my opinion, however, a lot is going on. The matter was also criticized by Civic Platform Party. This is another sign of the Law and Justice Party running a bad foreign policy, that they have a problem with Israel and the USA and there is no question of them getting up from their knees is apparent. The Cookies 15 movement was supposed to be a possible ally of the Law and Justice Party after the parliamentary elections. Today, members of this group did not hide their frustration with the change in the agenda of the same. We do not envision being a coalition party now that it is subservient to Israel and the parliament is already a Knesset. The American side ensures that the Just Act, commonly referred to as S-447, does not impose any financial or legal burden. The State Department is to present a report to the US Congress of the progress of the country's compliance with the so-called Terrorism Declaration regarding restitution of airless property left over from victims of the Holocaust. On the other hand, Jewish organizations and representatives of the Israeli government are not hiding the fact that their aim is to make claims against Poland. The final report from the Parliamentary Commission investigating the Amber Gold financial fraud scandal has been released. It states that Marcin P was a straw person and the state, implying the Secret Services, have completely failed in their duties. The Polish financial company, liquidated in 2012, turned out to be a pyramid scheme that cost many Poles their life savings. The report shines a particularly negative light on the work of state officials at the time, pointing out many malpractices and negligence.
Skrajnie źle oceniamy przede wszystkim działalność. We evaluate the work of the police and secret services, especially led by Minister Jacek Cichocki, as extremely bad. Firstly, Minister Cichocki said nothing about the case during the parliamentary debate on July 30, 2012. And secondly, he gave false information to the parliament and in turn to the public opinion that the secret services conducted an article investigation of all the Amber Gold companies since March of 2012. The Amber Gold scandal showed that the prosecution at that time was unable to get to the bottom of the most important crimes, unable to conduct difficult investigations and unable to draw conclusions from such cases, which is best exemplified by the disciplinary actions that are being taken right now. After three years of leading this commission, I have no doubt that Martin Peer was the so-called straw person. He was indeed a person who was leading the company, but he definitely didn't come up with the idea for this scheme and wasn't the man in charge. Please look at the part of the report showing the testimony of Martin Peer in front of the commission. Let me remind you when he was asked whether he was in charge and if he was a straw person, there was a long moment of silence, after which he responded, I abstain from answering that question. The matter of Amber Gold's fraud in the aviation industry hadn't been touched on until the change of government from the civic platform to the Law and Justice Party. It's being done now, several people are already facing charges in connection to this and all the investigations are ongoing. The Justice Tribunal of the European Union has held yet another hearing about Poland, Czech Republic and Hungary. The European Commission has stated that the countries failed to meet requirements for the programme of dividing asylum applicants in accordance with the Union quota following the 2015 migrant crisis. The respective countries say that the forced resettlement violated their government's sovereignty in determining who has the right to live in their countries, and the programme simply did not work. Wojciech Koszczak has more. The EU relocation program expired a long time ago, but Poland, the Czech Republic and Hungary are being brought to the European Court of Justice by the European Commission. Most commentators agree that the possible verdict will have only a symbolic value, but there is also the risk that the European Court will hand out financial penalties to the three countries concerned, and it would mean they have to take in migrants anyway. The Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs says they are prepared for this possibility dla tych trzech państw, a to oznacza, że de facto the relocation program is practically dead now. Not only Poland, but also other countries declared they would not fulfill it in the way it was agreed in September 2015. And we are consistent and will not admit migrants in the framework of the relocation scheme, because this is not efficient and it is not moving us closer to completion of our goal. Moreover, it's also jeopardizing the security strategy that the Polish government is pursuing. Poland will not perform this mechanism. Polski rząd uczynił bardzo dobrze. The Polish government is doing the right thing by not accepting this mechanism, not accepting the quotas of immigrants that are forced upon us. And I think it was a good move for the European Council to fix the previous settlement regarding the forced relocation of refugees. I think that case is closed and this attempt to punish Poland is a way of getting bloody revenge on the country. If we are a community, I think we should think in terms of solidarity. Can we imagine a situation? when for some reason hundreds of thousands of people rush from Central Asia through Russia into Poland and we received no basic solidarity from the other countries of the European Union. Speaking mindly, it will be a very sad occurrence. The European Union relocation system was devised for about 120,000 of the so-called refugees who arrived to Italy and Greece in 2015. According to an agreement signed by Eva Kopacz, Poland was to receive around 7,000 people but in reality, most of the EU member states failed to stick to their commitments and only 32,000 migrants were taken into the EU countries. Some of them took only a handful of refugees to avoid the trouble that Poland, the Czech Republic and Hungary are now in. The ruling of the court will be made this fall, days before the parliamentary election in Poland. Alabama's state Senate have passed a bill outlawing nearly all abortions, with exceptions only in place to protect the mother's health. The bill is part of a multi-state effort to have U.S. Supreme Court reconsider a woman's constitutional right to an abortion. 
Alabama lawmakers passed a bill on Tuesday that would criminalize nearly all abortions in the state. It will be the strictest bill in the nation, banning all abortion unless the woman's life is in danger. The law, passed by a vote of 25 to 6, would take effect six months after being signed by Republican Governor Kay Ivey. Protesters rallied against the bill ahead of the vote, with some dressed as women from the TV drama The Handmaid's Tale. The law is certain to face legal challenges from the American Civil Liberties Union and other groups who have vowed to sue. It comes after four states approved so-called heartbeat bills this year that outlaw abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The Alabama bill goes further, banning abortions at any time and punishing those who perform the procedure with imprisonment. Governor Ivey hasn't said whether she would sign Alabama's bill if it got to her desk, but she is known to be a strong opponent of abortion. A total of 16 U.S. states have introduced bills to restrict abortion rights this year, with many conservative state legislators feeling emboldened with the U.S. Supreme Court holding a solid conservative majority. Thank you very much for joining me here this evening at Poland Daily. I'm John Carter. Stay tuned after the break for Poland Daily Weather. It's followed by the business, culture, history and finally the travel.